Let's speak about what's coming next. Are you ready for next? Are you ready for next? Our sponsors and partners outside are the ones that build the, the market with us, are the ones that support us, are the ones that pave the way each year to build a better DevOps and a better DevSecOps world. Thank you. Thank you to our sponsors. <laughs> If you are ready for next, I want to share with you what comes next. But in order to leap forward, I have to look back. And in 2018, we spoke about liquid software for the first time. I remember this vision comes from Fred, my co-founders, and then Fred and Joab wrote the book, and we brought the, the actor that played Richard in the Silicon Valley HBO show, and we make some jokes on the Swamp Up stage. You guys remember that? Someone was with us in Swamp Up uh, 2018. And Richard, oh, the guy, <laughs> Richard is the, the uh, uh, character name. And we made some jokes out of it. Will someone in this room today doubt how important continuous update is as a vision, as a mission? This is what we do. This is what we wake up for. This is our breakfast and this is our dinner. Why are we automating everything? Why are we securing everything? in order to have a world where software is liquid. A year after, we spoke about security. And then we said to you, security is going to be yet another task on your plate. And you will have to support the people in your organization. As you provide them with DevOps services, you will also have to make sure that these two worlds are harmonized and bridged So you will have one solution that is not only fast, but also secured. Raise your hand if you think otherwise today, four years after, if you think that security is not part of your job. Thank you. Thanks, God. <laughs> I took a bet here. <laughs> And it's not over. Like, uh, look at us. We, we met just a year ago and we spoke about security and how the world is going to the edge, and that, that's wonderful. But something happened in November of last year with uh, ChatGPT and everything around AI and everybody speaking about AI, and we will speak about it today, a bit different than what you hear from the market, a bit less uh, um, focusing on the, on the slogans, but the practicality. But it's not only us anymore, that deals with fast and secured continuous update world. It's not only us, it's also machines that are now part of it. And let me tell you one thing, and, uh, and this is different than what I remember 10 years ago. What I remember 10 years ago as DevOps started or a bit more, I remember speaking about automation, acceleration of software, acceleration of processes. We spoke about continuous integration, right, Koska? Guys, Koska Kawaguchi, the founder of Jenkins, is here. <laughs> we spoke about automation, but we spoke about automation because machine-powered developers and AI is a bit different because machine now can take some tasks by themselves and can train themselves to even do it better than us. So we are talking not only about the world of software, of liquid software, we are talking about the world of liquid software where everything is fast, secured, automated, but also being done by a new player that is a machine. And we will speak about that today uh, and, and what has been changed. Now, in order to implement that, we, we have to set some strategy and we have to follow the JFrog philosophy. So one of the things that uh, we identified was the change in the market. So what happened in the 80s and the 90s, and most of you are too young to probably remember that, but big giant companies provided you as a developer with a platform. And it was a platform in a box, and this is what you do, this is what you work with. 
And then the era of open source, the era of best of breed. This is where JFOG was born. JFOG was born to this, to this pain, to best of breed, to open source, to developers' freedom, to the democracy of developers. And what do we have now? What do we see now? We see you asking us to consolidate it around some expertise so it will not get out of proportion when you provide your organization with a tool set. How many tools can one developer manage? And how scalable it is? And how secure it is? And how expensive it is? So we start to see a kind of a movement from a full platform to a full best of breed to a platform with a best of breed experience, consolidating tools around expertise. Not so long ago, when we went public in 2020, we spoke about a hybrid world. And we got some legit questions. Mike, do you really think that the world is going to stay hybrid? Because we hear that everybody is moving to the cloud. I'll tell you one thing. First of all, maybe. But you are telling us that it's still important for you to keep the freedom of choice. And you know what, Shlomi? Our storage volume is at the level that we cannot allow ourselves to move all the assets to the cloud. And you know what? We are a highly regulated company, so it will take us time to move some workloads to the cloud. And you know what? Even if we will move to the cloud, we don't want to be one cloud shop. We don't want to have any vendor lock-in. We want to have the freedom of choice, the flexibility. There is nothing wrong about that. To demand that, there is nothing wrong about it. And when we spoke about it in 2020, it was, what do you mean? You're not moving to the cloud? Not everything moving to the cloud? Yes. The majority of our customers set it as, as part of the strategy to move DevOps and DevSecOps workloads to the cloud, and we gain amazing experience together with them doing so. But it's a transition mode, and it will take time, and until then, the world still needs a hybrid environment. And the last thing is obviously the binaries. If I would stand on this stage 10 years ago and ask you what is the primary asset that you manage when you run your software supply chain, your answer would probably be 90%, 80% of, of my time is about source code management from the different groups in my organization and different uh, uh, projects and different contributions and commits and so on. And if I will ask you today, what is the 70, 80% of your software supply chain? What is the primary asset? What is it that you bring from outside, from the public hub? What is it that you secure? What is it that you tag, that you promote, that you distribute? What do you have in your runtime environment, if not binary? And by the way, with this new guest that called a machine that doesn't speak English, it's all about binaries. What is an AI model and a training model, if not a binary? So from one year to another, we start to see how important it is to be focused on an asset and not just to build a platform with crazy capabilities, but to build a platform with the right capabilities, focusing on the right asset and to build your expertise around that. And then what will happen is that we will have different platforms that provide the best of breed experience because of this expertise around an asset that coexists. Now, 50% of you sit in the crowd and love me and a big fan of the frogs and say, wow, he's right. And the other 50% is my challenge. The other 50% are saying, okay, so he took his strategy and his philosophy and made it a fact on stage. So we prepared ourselves to this 50% and we brought what the market is saying. Guys, Look at JFOG, 14 years after we founded the company. And what you will see here today is all about innovation and alignment with what you need tomorrow. 
And when we ask you, are you ready for next, we are serious about it. But we know that because we are very good listeners. And we never failed. We didn't miss the, the cloud or the containers revolution, the Kubernetes, all of these changes. We didn't miss that because we are a good listeners. So here's what the market is saying about platform versus best of breed. What the market is saying about platform versus best of breed is that your manager, the CIOs, the CISOs, your leaders, the people who manage your organization and sign the check, I was saying, yes, would like to see some consolidation. You know why? Because 20 tools per developers is not cool anymore. It's out of proportion. It's not managed, manageable. Yes, we want to see some kind of an organization around an asset that, that we lead. And when we ask them about security and DevOps, security is if not number one, number two in their list. And why is that? Why is that? All the companies that we met, all the companies, 100%, no matter what your size is, no matter how young you are, no matter how big you are, no matter what language you use, no matter where you are in the world, all companies have some security tools. Raise your hand if you have more than one. Come on, don't be shy. That's, that's it, that's, that's the truth. Raise your hand if you have more than five. Yes. So what, what has been changed? I'll tell you what happened. What happened is that you are in a race with a hacker that is not sitting within your organization and looking at your static analysis and how you protect your source code. This guy is waiting for you at the production environment, in the runtime environment, and guess what you have there? Oh, yes, binaries. And this is how Log4j happened. And this is what Spring Shell is telling you. And this is the NPM story. This is the PyPI story. These are the vulnerabilities that the White House referred in the bill that they sent to all of us and how you protect your software supply chain. So yes, DevOps and security are one, but yes, security must be modernized. And when we ask your CIOs, not me, all the, this fancy bank, some of them are, are sitting here, uh, we just quoted from the CIO surveys, what we asked about hybrid and multi-cloud was shocking. Like it's changing so fast. We asked them, so what do you think about hybrid? And the majority of, of the people said, we prefer a mixture. And maybe it's not something that you say on stage, but that's the reality. Is there anyone here that will say it's only self-managed or on-prem or only cloud? Of course not. But more than that, all of the big enterprise that are working with JFrog are demanding now from day one to put a five years or even more strategy about how you build a multi-cloud, a multi-region, solution that is also a hybrid solution. And it's mandatory to provide a tool that is identical wherever you use it. And obviously, <laughs> we have to speak about that. Um, so first, I check the box. Second, nobody really knows what it means. And if, if, if someone is telling you, if someone is telling you, and I know that we have some crazy um, talks about it today. Eli, I know that you're going to speak about AI and how Google implements that. But we don't really know. We don't really know what these machines are preparing for us. But I do know one thing. It must be better controlled. And it must be regulated. And it must be secured. Because what our customers, and put aside the surveys, put aside the surveys, of course everybody is speaking about that. Of course everybody already allocated budget to kind of implement Gen AI in, in his organization, her organization. But put this aside and think about, think about what's happening now. And what our customers are telling us 
is that they are freaking out because they don't know if their developers are using AI. Do you know if your developers are using Copilot now? Do you know if they use other tools? My daughter, my, my 15 years old daughter, doing homework with ChatGPT. Of course, it's being used. It's being used, and what we have to make sure, as the providers of this service, because these guys will come to you, the Python developers, the data scientists, they will come to you to get these services. <coughs> and what we have to make sure is that we provide them the best environment we can. And this, what makes me think and state that the flow of software supply chain is a flow of binary. Because there is one thing that is relevant to all of the things that I mentioned, to all of the things that the CIO survey said. And I know that because you told us so. <laughs> 